But first, Edwin Poots is the DUP leader designate. He says his top priority is to get rid of the protocol. Now, that might be easier said than done. Mr Poots faces many other issues like reforming the DUP and refreshing the party's ministerial team at Stormont. Edwin Poots was not available for interview tonight. However, I am joined by one man who knows his thinking, the MP for North Antrim, Ian Paisley. Edwin Poots insists that getting rid of the protocol is his top priority. How is he going to do that? Well, good evening, uh, Paul. I think uh, it is very important that people recognise, and certainly we recognise in the party, how uh, debilitating the protocol has been for the people of Northern Ireland. Uh, whether you're a Catholic businessman or a Protestant businesswoman, whether you're in uh, a different section of society, the protocol has been corrosive in terms of uh, business opportunities, in terms of economic hardship that it has created, in terms of social uh, debilitation that it has created, and political instability. There are probably the poorest set of political relationships in terms of North South Ray, in terms of East West relations, and in terms of intercommunal re relationships. So it needs to be addressed, yes. and we're trying to persuade the Prime Minister, whose sole responsibility it is yes. to fix this, to get My uh, his finger out and to start addressing this issue. All that you have said there we know about, but yeah. how can you remove a protocol which is an international agreement? Well, within the protocol it has actually the terms uh, of how it can be done. If there are seismic social and political and economic upheavals under, term, under the uh, terms of the protocol in section 16, the government can unilaterally make a step to take away those things that are causing the problem. Now, Will we it? saw this very briefly by the Dublin government uh, for a matter of hours trying to do that in January and then, of course, uh, rowing back on that because they realised... Well, uh, it was that, the EU. Well, they realised that they'd played into the hands of, of unionists who were saying the protocol should not be in place. Uh, we're now saying we're five months into this. This is not getting any easier. And remember, this is the uh, skimmed milk version of the protocol. Come October, we have the full fat version with more regulations, more attacks. I mean, our ports... I our ports are doing more checks than Rotterdam. How do you know that the Prime Minister will, in your words, get his finger out? He has to. I mean, this is a part of the United Kingdom. If and what he, if he doesn't? If he doesn't fix it, he, he must know, and history will teach him, that you cannot leave Northern Ireland festering like this, that it will cause more social problems for the entire nation. And I do believe one thing about Boris Johnson. I do believe that he does care about the nation. And if that is the case, he has to care about this small part of the nation and fix it, because this instability will only grow and make matters But he hasn't worse shown much interest this, thus far, has he? Well, I think that the up until now, quite frankly, he has been distracted by a whole host of other things. But the last uh, number of weeks have demonstrated that the instability cannot go any further. So his spokesman, Lord Frost, has been very, very clear that this is no longer sustainable. Mm. Um, the Irish government are now saying things, I mean, remarkably, mm. that they want this fixed by the 12th of July. They see what's coming down the tracks mm. in terms of instability. But Boris Johnson and, has let you down before. Oh, Boris Johnson has betrayed the people of Northern Ireland. Make no mistake about it. Boris Johnson had the opportunity to deliver Brexit on the same terms for the people of uh, Northern Ireland as he did for the people of England, and he let us down. But we can't be blamed for his betrayal. What we've got to do is put that back to him and say, now fix it. And uh, as I said, I'm very pleased with the words of Lord Frost. What I would like to see now are actions. And in the interim, uh, for example, would the DUP continue to boycott North-South ministerial meetings? Well, of course, the DUP hasn't actually boycotted them. What the, has happened is that our ministers have either not been able to agree agendas with their southern counterparts, and on that basis those meetings were pointless. Uh, does it not put the agreement at risk? Well, it does say to the government uh, of the Irish Republic that if you want to normalise relationships, then let's normalise everything, and let's normalise this issue of the protocol. Stop pushing for a protocol that's damaging the Port of Dublin as much as it's damaging businesses in Northern Ireland. Mr Poots is meeting MLAs today. Uh, how soon will we see changes at the top of government? Uh, I think uh, probably by Tuesday week. Uh, you will see um, the opportunity for a refresh. Uh, Edwin Poots promised in his reform agenda that uh, he would not just come in and immediately make those changes. He would first of all, consult with all of his MLAs and all of his MPs. He's well through that consultation process today. He will finish that tomorrow. And on the basis of that, we'll then consult a little bit further and bring in changes with regards to the ministerial shake-up. Will Arlene Foster remain as First Minister for her term? 
Well, well Arlene has already indicated um, when she would like to depart. That's at the end of June. Yeah, yes, that's at the end of June. I understand that part of the consultation process uh, today has been about the uh, MLAs being asked about that and how quickly they would like that to move on. It's a long and, goodbye, isn't and, it? Well, I think that uh, the conversation between Edwin and Arlene will resolve what is best for the party and what is best mm. for the country. You... But we're not rushing or trying to push that out. We want this to be done mm. properly. But do you not agree that the ousting of Arlene Foster has been brutal? Uh, the ousting of any political leader has been brutal. I mean, I talk to Conservatives who had uh, starry eyes talk about Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, but I'm not and, talking about Margaret and, Thatcher. And I, I'm talking I, about Arlene but, Foster. But I'm making a general point. And uh, I, I think that uh, with starry eyes, they look at what happened to Margaret Thatcher and forget about how she was ousted. They do the same mistake about my father. They do the same mistake about all political careers and all political leadership issues. These things eventually do come crashing down. You did say that uh, 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 Edwin Poots would have a conversation with Arlene Foster. You will know how narrow his margin of victory was on Friday. Mm. Two votes. How does he unite a party with that kind of a split? Well, I would say that the union is the most important thing and which unifies... Not should, the party. And should... Far more, the union's far more important than any political party. Let's make no mistake about it. It's country first, party a far second. And uh, our party members should know that and they put the country first. And therefore, they should make sure that they do everything to protect the union. And splitting our party, because they maybe didn't vote for the person who's now the leader, is not good for the country. Uh, we will need every single unionist to galvanise and get behind this new leader and behind this party. But how do you sell that, for example, to people who have left voting the, for the party and instead vote for the Ulster Unionists or Alliance? Well, I, I've looked at, that, at these analyses and I think it is quite interesting. I actually think that most voters who no longer vote DUP, they actually are not switching directly from DUP to the Alliance Party. I think they're switching and sitting at home. And I think that we must encourage those unionists to come out again who have been upset, annoyed, angry at, at unionist leadership to say, give us another chance. This is, in fact, our last chance to save this country. Coming up to the next election... Is it? it is. Coming up to the next election, um, if you don't vote for unionism, uh, you will see a border poll. If you don't vote for unionism, if the protocol isn't the way by then, that will only I, get worse. I, We've got to maximise the unionist vote. And the only way we can do that is say to other unionist parties and, and to the democratic unionist voters, come out and maximise the union support. This sounds like scaremongering to me. It's not scaremongering, it's absolutely honest. I mean, no unionist could look at what's happening in Northern Ireland today and not be concerned for the future of this country. And therefore, they should be saying at the next election, I will make a pledge now to get out and vote. Two questions for you. First of all, will the DUP still legislate for Irish language? Well, our party's made a number of commitments in the new decade, new approach. Does that include uh, that? Well, it's made a number of commitments in, in that issue. We will have to, uh, uh, for example, I don't believe that the government would be sustainable if we demonstrate that we're rowing back from any of that. What is so it? you will do that, whether the, the protocol is gone or not? Well, well, there's an issue of timing here. How quickly will this be done? This piece of legislation isn't even drafted. We haven't seen it. Maybe it's, not this term either. Uh, well, it, it may be years away. I don't know. Um, that will be a matter for the Assembly, for the administration. All I can say is that our party's made a number of commitments. We will have to see what the legislation looks like. I, for one, am quite happy to respect people who speak Irish, want them to feel comfortable in their Irishness and their sense of identity. And uh, if the legislation does no harm or violence to my identity, why would I object to that? Okay. But, if the, but if the legislation does attempt to do that, then that there will be objections. Are you confident that Sinn Féin will nominate for a Deputy First Minister? Well, if Sinn Féin want to bring down the Assembly, then they will be the people who will have to answer in the public about that. I do not believe it's in anyone's interest to wreck the Assembly. But I'll tell you one thing, Paul. If the government does not get the protocol right, all of this, all the bets may be off. If the government continues to leave the protocol hanging there and festering there, this Assembly could crash because the public out there are so fed up with the, with the political mess. So. Time is against everyone, not just nationalists, not just unions. We're not in little bubbles here. We're together. And I would appeal to all of the people of Northern Ireland, we're, to get, we're together in this, and if okay. we don't fix it, this country will be destroyed. Finally, briefly, have you and others on your wing of the party been speaking to Arlene Foster? Uh, well, I was at a church service with Arlene Foster to celebrate the centenary of Northern Ireland uh, two Sundays ago. So, you know, I, I, I think that there is communication ongoing, and that's politics. Ian Paisley, thank you very much. Thank you. Listening to that, our